guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to fillet a mutton snapper and you can use this method that I'm about to show you on all different types of snapper as well. Just to show you what I've got going on here, basically I've got my fillet table and I want to give a big shout out to my fan Terry Oak who sent me this table and he noticed that I didn't have a fillet table in my last video when I filleted the Mahi Mahi which you can check out as well. Um, and he sent this to me, so thank you so much Terry. First time using it, I love it already, and I haven't even used it yet. But I've got my knives over here on the table. I've got my knife sharpener as well. And I have an assortment of knives. Um, you know, depending on the fish you're filleting, you may want to use a sturdier knife versus a flimsy knife. Um, so I've got my assortment here, and also for skinning the, skinning the skin off of the fish. And I've also got the sharpening stone, which we already sharpened the knives. And over here, we've got my five gallon bucket of salt water from offshore. This is clean offshore water. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, that's not clean water. Well, it, it's clean. I, I get that fish, you know, live in it and do their thing in it. So, but it's still fresh, clean offshore water. And I've also got a 10 pound bag of ice in here to get it nice and chilled. And then I've got my land shark cooler with my mutton snappers in it. And now Brian is gonna get into a little bit about why we need to have the salt water here in order to rinse off the fish versus using fresh water. You don't want to use fresh water. So Brian's going to explain. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this salt water versus fresh water situation, which raised a lot of questions um, on our last uh, How to Flay a Fish Mahi uh, video that Darcy did. Now again, I, you know, it's pretty common knowledge among you know, salt water guys and fishermen, they're supposed to rinse the fish with salt water, and, and that's what you recommend the thing to do. And that's what most people just tell you, and, and that's enough. But um, Scientifically, and I'm not a biologist, but the gist of it is, has to do with osmotic pressure. Uh, the, the fish that lives in the salt water has salt, you know, some salt uh, water in it, like a 2% salt solution. You know, most people are made up of water, right? That's whatever, 95%. Um, that has a certain pressure. If you rinse the fish with fresh water, that has a lower pressure. That fresh water goes into the molecules, the, the water molecules in the meat of the fish, and it causes them to expand and they can burst, okay? That's bad. That, you lose your taste. Uh, it's most acceptable to bacteria and it loses its texture and you get that you really get that white meaty um, look on it so it's not so it's not good it's bad okay um, and you can google that or whatever you want to do but uh, for now just rinse it in salt water if you got to bring a bucket of salt water home uh, that's what you got to do um, or just take one off the boat and, and at the flight table at the marina whatever you got to do all right back to Darcy all right here's my mutton snapper this is probably a three pound fish nice fish but the mutton snappers do get very very big and I also just wanted to mention real quick, if you don't have access to the salt water, you can just make your own salt water rinse. You can get a bucket of, a five gallon bucket of fresh water, put like a handful of kosher salt in there or just some regular sea salt, mix it up and you can have your own mixture um, just for your own personal preference to use with freshwater fish as well. All right, so here's my mutton snapper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, I've got my blade here. This is a Bubba blade. For those of you that would like to know, it works for me and, and I've used it quite a bit on all different sorts of fish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut right back here behind the fin, up towards the head, just cutting all the way down to the bone here, like that. Alright, now the next thing to do is I'm going to run, I'm going to run my knife along the backbone all the way to the tail. Just nice and gentle, find the, find the bone, and then just work your knife along the side of the bone all the way down. Okay, now after I've done that, the next thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lift gently up on the meat that I've already just separated and I'm just gonna gently lift up and I'm gonna still work my bone, um, work my knife along the backbone here. Just like that. Now over here by the head, there's a bunch of pin bones here. So you're gonna need to break the pin bones with your knife. Get through those pin bones. Now I'm just going to continue working down. And then down here, after you get through the pin bones, you want to make sure you work the knife along the outside of the rib cage. You don't want to go through the rib cage and then open up the guts, because you really don't want the guts on your fillet. That's, no, that's a no-no. 
So just along the rib bones, the rib bones are right here. And then I'm just gonna cut the filet right off. That's one nice filet. Then I'm gonna do the other side real quick here. And I have this mostly ready to go. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm just going to break the pin bones right here. Here, breaking. And then you just work your knife down the backbone. Just like that. I'm gonna flip it this way, actually. And there's the rib bones. Don't open up the guts. Now I've got my two fillets, my filleted mutton snapper, and and I mean a lot of people <clears throat> they actually like like to use the rest of the fish, or you can make some fish soup with it. And I'm really not gonna do that. Um, I know that you get a bunch of you're gonna say I'm wasting a ton of meat like that, and I know people even cook this fish whole and just uh, you know take the the scales off of it. But I'm just gonna give it back into the canal, into the ecosystem, and the fish are gonna eat it up. And trust me, the crabs and everything in the water is going to tear that thing apart and eat it. So it's not going to waste. Trust me. I just don't want to eat it. <laughs> Okay, I just cleaned off the table after I just filleted the fish, got the fish out of the way, and I wiped down the table. I got the fresh water off the table. I'm really just trying to avoid the, my meat from the fillet getting in contact with any fresh water. I don't want that to happen. So I just dried the table. Now it's time to skin it and take the skin off of it. And I'm going to change up my knife. This is a Dexter knife. Um, I, it's just my personal preference. I'm sure I could use the Bubba blade as well to skin it. Um, but I just prefer to change it to my Dexter blade here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, basically this is this does take a little bit of technique and some practice to get used to. But basically you're going to be, it's kind of like a combination of a push-pull factor. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And you want to, when you skin the fish, you want it close to you. So that way you have leverage. You don't want to be filleting, skinning it out here because you have no leverage. So you want to be close to you. You want to hold, with one hand, you want to hold the skin, so you're going to be pulling with the skin, and you're going to be pushing with the knife. And it's not like, you're not really sawing it, it's more just like, um, <laughs> you're not really like, you know, fiercely uh, sawing the fish. You're kind of just working the blade up and down like this. I'm holding the skin here, pulling, pulling and pushing with the knife like this. All the way down. Perfect, that's one filet. Like I said, I've been doing this a while, so it does take some practice, but you know, just keep that, keep it close to you, keep your elbows bent so that way you got leverage. And I'm just gonna insert the knife here, get my first initial cut, hold the skin, push and pull. Just like so. Here are my two fillets. Can't wait to eat them. I love mutton snapper. Okay, now the next last part to do, you can see here, there's really no bloodline on the snapper. So I'm not going to be cutting the bloodline out like I did on the Mahi Mahi. Um, it's, it's just a snapper, it's fine. But the last thing we have to do is, there's always a set of pin bones right here on a snapper. So you need to remove those bones out. You don't want to eat those. So the pin bones, I'm just gonna take out like this. go. That's good. No bones. And then this one. Like so. That's good to go. No bones. Now I'm going to take my fillets into my salt water mixture that I've got over here with the ice. And basically, I mean, this is what I'm going to use to clean it. So I'm just going to kind of make sure all the blood and the, the uh, fish scales are off of it. Then I'm going to let it sit in here until I'm ready to bag it. 
and then we just stick it into the bag and it's good to go. You can end up freezing it. We like to use a vacuum sealer to freeze our fish um, or you just go ahead and eat it right away. So that's how you play a mahi, that's how you play a mutton snapper. All right, done filleting the mutton snappers. Now I'm going to dispose of them. And I don't want to hear any comments about how I'm wasting meat and polluting the water and stuff. And even though this is like a freshwater canal system, trust me, the turtles, um, the ducks, I mean, every little fish in here is going to eat these fish. Don't worry. It's not going to go to waste. So feed my backyard bass, my backyard peacock bass. There you go. All right. Cool. So I hope you guys learned something today on how to fillet a mutton snapper. And like I said in the beginning, you can use all these techniques that you learned today for just regular snapper, mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper. It all applies to all the general species of snappers that are out there. Uh, so like I said, I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, give it a big thumbs up for me so that way I know I'm doing my job correctly. And subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, I already have a how to fillet a mahi mahi video, so check that out as well. And I'm just going to be providing more how to videos and information for you guys to learn how to fillet fish and catch fish. So until my next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching.